afternoon. This is Pastor Al, First Baptist Church of Bernalillo. It's been a week uh, since we've been on here and miss talking with you guys, but uh, just enjoyed my family. Had my some of my kids in and uh, we were spending time with them and the Christmas holiday. I hope that you had a good Christmas um, and this little little week between Christmas and New Year's. Let's uh, look at a couple words, uh, you know, and that's that's you know, I, this whole devotional, uh, I, I pray that you would maybe make a comment so that I know you're watching. Uh, we want to know if you're following. Uh, we want to use our time wisely. But I'm, I'm looking forward to the, the year to come and some of the things that we have to look forward to. And as I've stressed in my vision and some of the things I've said on Sunday mornings, that I'm looking for the Lord to uh do some things around the church here and and we're looking to move forward we're going to continue to grow i believe as we see the vaccine become more available and we see some things take place that maybe hopefully uh the church will be opened up and we'll be able to get out and, and do some things but we're going to move forward whether uh we have to wear a mask or whatever the case may be but i'm looking forward to what god's going to do in 2021 with that being said let's get into our word for today Sunday's message, we talked about, you know, we finished up our series, uh, Christmas Gifts from God, and, and we talked about the gift of the Son of God, and the word that I use is grandeur. Uh, that's a, a word that we, we use from time to time, uh, and, and, but I don't believe sometimes we really uh, understand what that word means. Uh, grandeur is a noun in the general sense is the definition that I have is greatness uh, that quality or combination of qualities in an object which elevates or expands the mind and ex, uh, excites pleasurable emotions in in the one that uh, contemplates it and and that is the thing uh, this word this noun name uh, that I want us to get to a place that as we Think of Jesus and the magnificence and what great thing that he has done for us by giving us uh, his son. God has given us a gift that allows us, and not to go into all my sermon and, and everything, but it gives us through Jesus the ability to not only understand God better, but to see his attributes and to uh for lack of a better way to say it, fall in love with him. God has always given us everything we need. And, you know, the, the whole idea of love brings us to our verse of the day. First John 4, 9, in this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. God loved us so much that he wanted us to do that. Now, as we think about Jesus and him, you know, we just, we've just celebrated Christmas, the birth of Christ. He was born of a virgin, laid in a manger there in Bethlehem for the sole purpose of being a sacrificial lamb uh, to give us that ability to live. But in, in John 1, 11, it says, he came to his own and his own people did not receive him. Now that's not just talking about the Jews. Uh, Jesus was born into uh, the chosen race, and, and, and that's not, uh, that chosen race was just the people uh, that God put in place or allowed through Abraham uh, to be a, a people that a, a child could be born. Uh, God created everybody to, be, to begin with, right? And sin come into the play. We were all Gentiles. Then Abraham accepted the challenge that God uh, gave him, and he, he moved in faith, accepting what God had said to him. And the Jews were not accepted by a lot of people. But in this verse, it says he came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. I believe that verse goes even a step farther and talks about human, uh, human beings as in general, all people. Not all people want to accept Jesus. Today, that is not a, you know, you can, you can talk about God, but don't bring up Jesus. But the Son of God brings us that ability that we, if we accept him, you know, it's one thing to know someone. It's another thing to receive or accept them. Uh, 
for who they are and uh, and in this case what they are and that is the son of God let us truly believe what John 3 16 says it says for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life John 1 11 says they did not receive him they didn't believe him they didn't think he was the son of God but we need to know that he is the son of God. And with that grandeur, that great magnificence, the creator of the universe, if we try to comprehend those things that we take for granted so many times, we get up and go through our day and we don't even think about God or what Jesus is trying to do in our lives to manifest himself through the Holy Spirit and to give chance and hope to others. And that's the reason why we need to examine the grandeur of the word of God, uh, the scripture that we have, uh, how we can dig and understand more about Jesus, because that's the way he communicates to us. Uh, he He has taken and compiled these these letters, these uh, uh, the, just the prophecy and everything from the Old Testament, and the New Testament. And as we're studying Revelation, we're going to get back into that this Sunday. And as I said at the very beginning of Revelation, when we talked about that, that the book of Revelation, it's, it ties all the different books of the Bible together. It finishes the story. It, could, it gives it all meaning. It gives us understanding. And God has given us the agenda in which we can live our lives, knowing that the grandeur of the creator of this universe has concluded us on either side of eternity with creation and then, you know, Jesus coming and actually becoming flesh and living amongst us. That is where we search the scripture and we find the grandeur. I, how many of you read your Bible and then when you find a truth that uh, God reveals himself in the words, do you not get goosebumps? Do you not just say, wow, God is his, is, is his real and 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 he spoke to me through his word. It's a it's 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 a fun time, but that is what grandeur is all about. It is something that we contemplate, we read scripture, and then when God shows the proof in it, it is so marvelous that we can understand that God came and lived here with us to show us how to live a life without sin, and uh, it's exciting. In my sermon Sunday, the first point that we talked about was the grandeur of God. And, and I used the text, uh, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. You know, John 1, 14, and, and we know that he did do that. Uh, history itself, there's history books other than the Bible that, that say that there was this man named Jesus. And it tells the story, and it backs up scripture in every way. And... To understand this grandeur, we have to go back and in my points, <clears throat> my sub points, we talked about those three beginnings that we talked about the previous week. Uh, John 1, 1, we talk about the word and the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And we can't understand and put our finger on the grandeur of eternity because we don't understand and can't really put a true definition because we've never experienced it. Everything that we know has a beginning and an end. You can take any point in the past, and wherever you put your finger, God's already there. He's already been there. He already knows that point, and it, and we have a hard time understanding that. First John five twelve says, or twenty says, and we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding, so that we may know Him, who is true, and and we are in Him, who is true. In his son, Jesus Christ, he is the true God of eternal life. Um, God, our Jesus, the word uh, has always been and always will be. And, and the grandeur of eternity is, is that because Jesus is the son of God and came here and lived on this earth, died, uh, was buried, resurrected. He has control of the grave. And one day we will we will see the grave overcome. And, and we'll live on this earth with, with Jesus for a thousand years, and then time will be no more. It will be eternity. And we have a part in that eternity. If we accept Jesus as the Son of God, and we believe that God raised him from the dead, amen, he forgives us of our sins, 
and we make him Lord of our life, and we we have that grandeur to look at for eternity. Uh, but then we have the grandeur of uh, creation. In Genesis 1, 1, we know in the beginning, uh, God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, but think about this now. When we come to know who Jesus is, when we believe the scripture, and we know that he is our savior, but He, we want to make him Lord. We also understand by reading the scripture that he is the creator. Um, not only did he create us, but he created us in his image. And we have, you know, we can look at ourselves and look at what God is doing. And through creation, even though we see things that are, that are going all different directions and not the way we would really like them to go, if we keep our eyes on the creator, you can go to Romans 1 and you can study that. It'll help you to understand some things. But here's the thing. Get, just think about what God did when he created you and me. When we were allowed to be born. And what is it he's doing with us right now in 2020? And it's still 2020, so we have to look at that as 2020. His creation is still evolving. Now, I'm not talking about evolution. We were created in the likeness of God. And we have the, the first Adam, and, and, and that's just all there is to it. He created us as human beings to have dominion over this earth. But we didn't listen, and we, we, we see that Adam and Eve, they were disobedient, and sin came onto the scene. But creation, the fact that God created us in his own image and includes us in his... Uh, sovereign plan his sovereign calendar has each of our names on there and all that we're doing is fulfilling his perfect will in our lives i pray that that's what your your desire in life is hebrews 1 2 says but that in these last days he has spoken to us by his son jesus whom he appointed to be heir of all things through him also he created the world he created the world but here's the thing we're going to talk this Sunday a little bit about, we're going to be in Revelation chapter 5, and we're going to see that Jesus assumes the deed to the world. And he is going to be given control to take care of the things that need to be taken care of here on earth. Creation, the church is already in heaven, but we're going to see creation, uh, and God's going to come and rule and reign as it was meant to be. And we're going to see that, and it's going to, it's going to be a fun time. But all this creation that we see right now will be made right by the great I am, the word, okay? Now, the other grandeur that we see as we see this, we have eternity, we have creation, uh, but eternity is those two things on the outside of creation. Creation is what we're living right now. This earth, Jesus is a part of it. He was born, that laid in the manger like we talked about, uh, but his, the grandeur of his authority in Mark 1, 1, the other beginning that we have talked about over the last few weeks is the gospel. Uh, Mark 1, 1, it says, in the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that is the Son of God, the one in charge. And we're going to see that this Sunday uh, or in the few next couple of weeks. But his authority is something that if we will accept it, it goes back to what we said a while ago in John 1, 11. It, they didn't accept him. Mankind has not accepted the authority that Jesus is the son of God, that he is the one who created everything, and he is the one who will rule and reign forever. Colossians 2, starting with verse 8 says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to the human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world and not according to Christ. Let's just stop right there for a second. If we allow the things that have transpired since creation and the traditions and the thinking of man and uh, the, the, the ability that man thinks that he is so smart, that he changes things to take control and take authority away from God Almighty, from Jesus, then we have a problem. And that is what's wrong with the world today is that Satan has influenced the world and its way of thinking in such a way that people do not want to accept Jesus as being the Son of God. 
See, it can't it can't be. How can that be? Well, you just have to believe. And that's the reason why John 3.16 is so important. Why do you think so many people memorize John 3.16? It has that word believe. You have to believe that he is the son of God. And if that is the case, then you can start understanding who God is. Because the verse goes on. Let's go look at verse 10. It says, for in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. God sent the Son. The Son sent the Holy Spirit. When we accept Jesus as our Lord, the authority that he has. Yes, he's our Savior. But we're to make him Lord of our lives. To give him the authority that we might listen and follow his direction. Follow how he stated in word. He says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Do you love the Lord? And then you'll keep his commandments. That means you give him authority. You listen to what he's saying. You want to do what he says. There's times in my life, this morning, or it was last night, I actually had a conflict. And I was going to do something that, I, you know, it, I, I just felt that it was wrong. And I, I, I back and forth, I, I, I asked myself and I said, no, I'm going to do what will make my Lord happy. Sometimes we have to give that authority, take it away from ourselves and give it to the one who's in charge. And I have found that when we do that, that's the battle. That's that, that, uh, that conflict that's in us and, and we fight against the bad and we want to do good. As Paul said, those that things that I, I want to do are the things that I don't do. And the things that I don't want to do are the things that I do. We have to get to a place that we accept the authority, the commandment of, of Jesus, and we give him the rule of our lives. And when we do that, it's just like the sky opens up and the grandeur of God in the flesh through Jesus Christ and get this, if you've accepted him as your Lord and Savior, he indwells you through the Holy Spirit. He's part of you. And that should give us goosebumps. That should give us uh, a desire to, to grow and to desire those very things that God has given us. Wasn't too awfully long ago, I think it was back in September, uh, Judy and I and Andy and Cheryl, we went to Yellowstone. And I remember standing off from a, there were several beautiful scenes, uh, but there's a waterfall and, and we were sitting there looking at it. And I was thinking of how magnificent that waterfall was. Not only the waterfall and the beauty of it all, but the power that's found in that. Um, the energy, the, the sound, the smell, even with the forest fire burning that, that was going on at the time up there, it was, it was just a freshness um, that's hard to explain other than, say, grandeur. And the, that is the magnificence that we can find in the power of our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, if we allow him to have rule in our lives. Let him manifest himself in our lives. Let him have a way as the son of God in our lives to include us in that magnificence we call creation, knowing that eternity is waiting on us. Amen. So back to our verse of the day in John 1, 4, 9, in this, the love of God has made, was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. That live is both ways, living today and living forevermore. And I pray that you, you get that and will accept the grandeur and the greatness and just the magnificence of who Jesus really is in our lives. My attitude adjustment is let me live and witness the excitement that comes from knowing the greatness of Jesus. There is no better place to be than in the center of God's will for your life. And when you do that and you accept the greatness of Jesus and what he's doing through you, all the excitement is there. It's sometimes a battle. It's sometimes just the damn right fight just to do the right thing. But when you overcome, there's excitement. 
there's enthusiasm. There's encouragement to know that he's right there with us, putting his arms around us, protecting us. But we still have to make the choice to accept him and believe. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. I thank you that uh, as we see this year pass away and we look to the new year, I pray that we just not be caught up and it all be about the, the craziness of this world. Uh, let us open our eyes to your magnificence, your grandeur, and let us feel the power. Let us feel the uh, direction that you're giving us. Let us be willing to roll our sleeves up and be a part of what it is that you need us to do. Lord, I thank you for making a way that we can look forward to eternity. I thank you for your precious word that we can read it and know your mind, know your heart, and listen to your commandments as you spoke through Jesus and through these, uh, the ones who actually penned the words, Lord, that through their lives and through their experiences that we can fully understand who you are. And I thank you so much that you give us that. And Lord, your Holy Spirit, let us always look for that Holy Spirit leading. Let us listen to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Let us never take for granted when we think or see what it is that you want us to do. Let us just hear it as if you were speaking to us. So many people just, they do, they, they, they avoid the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you would open their eyes, open their heart, their mind. And I thank you so much for the wonderful things that you've given us. And Lord, the things that we have to look forward to, specifically doing your will. And I ask all this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I look forward to seeing you here tomorrow. Pray you'll get back. I know it's been a week. Reach out to others. Tell them, hey, it's back online. And uh, put, a, put a like on there. Say something. Uh, but I do. I, I'd really like to know if you're, you're, you're watching this and, and just following along. Um, but I appreciate y'all. I love you. And uh, I'll see you here again tomorrow. Okay? Take care.